So to please do so as we bring ourselves into the space for our call to worship. This is the night that Christ gathered with his disciples in the upper room. This is the night that simple food becomes Christ's very presence. This is the night that God meets us through the gifts of the earth and the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the night that Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On this night, Holy God, we join with those first disciples join together in singing our opening song, An Upper Room Did Our Lord Prepare. Such a simple act, but with profound consequences. Usually, when we think of hospitality, it's extended to family and friends. Biblical hospitality, however, not only includes those 
but embraces strangers, widows, orphans, and foreigners. As the book of Hebrews, Hebrews says, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. A table, such a simple piece of furniture, a flat surface held up by four legs upon which food and drink are placed, and those who are hungry gather, whether friends or strangers, neighbors or foreigners, families or orphans. Such a basic piece of furniture, yet around which profound truths are not only discovered, but embodied. It was around a simple table that Abraham and Sarah first entertained angels without knowing it. In the heat of the day, three strangers approached their tent. Rather than feeling threatened, Abraham bows low to the ground before them and brings some water to wash their feet. Sarah makes bread while Abraham has a fine calf prepared. He brings curds and milk as well as a set and sets it before these strangers on a table underneath the cool shade of a tree, waiting upon them while they eat. Before leaving, they promise Sarah she will bear a son before they return. In welcoming the stranger, they welcomed a blessing. In extending hospitality, they, vis they were visited by God. Will you join together now in singing the God of Abraham prayer? Would you like to stand? You may. of Moses. On the night before God frees Israel from Egypt, the children of Israel are commanded to eat lamb. The blood of the lamb marks the doorpost and lintels of their homes, so God's angel will pass over them and spare their firstborn. With the lamb, they eat unleavened bread and bitter herbs. With sandals on feet and a staff in hand, it will be their last supper in Egypt. Slaves, they ate fish, cucumbers, melon, leeks, onions, and garlic. 
But with this Passover meal, not only is there a new menu, but a new mindset. No longer slaves of Egypt, but children of God. While it was fairly easy to change the menu, it was a lengthy struggle to change the minds of former slaves. They had a taste for slavery, but found freedom far into their tongues. When the people complain of hunger in the wilderness, God feeds them, mamma the bread from heavens, and quails by the thousands. When they complain of thirst, God provides water from the rock. Despite the miraculous provisions, they still complain, yearning for the foods of slavery. Despite their grumbling and murmuring, God provides continuing hospitality, setting a table in the desert for them for 40 years. Are there ways we ourselves are enslaved individually and as a people? Where do we need God's intervention to bring us into freedom? May we sing together, all who hunger gladly gather. David and Jonathan swear a covenant with each other, promising solemn friendship not only between them, but to their descendants as well. After Jonathan is killed, David wonders aloud if there are any descendants of his to whom he can show kindness. At this point in his life, David is triumphant. He's won battles not only against Israel's enemies, but also secured the throne for himself and his descendants. As king, he can have the company of anyone, not only in Israel, but in the surrounding kingdoms. He is a VIP among VIPs, and anyone whom he asks to dinner would be greatly honored. David discovers there's a son of Jonathan named Mephibosheth, one who was dropped as a child and legs broken, leading to a lifetime of disability. He sends for him, and Mesibetheth uh, falls on his face and says, Who am I that you should look upon a dead dog like me? 
David looks beyond Mehusaphat, disfigured, and sees a child of God. David restores ancestral lands to him, provides servants to farm that land, and tells him, you will eat at my table always. An extraordinary promise before he was born leads to a perpetual invitation to David's table. David is a man after God's own heart and extends hospitality to the lame. A nobody who thinks of himself as a dog instead finds himself welcome to the seat of honor with the king. Let us join in singing, I'm gonna eat at the welcome table. The Table of Elisha. War has been a scourge of the human race since time immemorial. Tribe against tribe, city against city, kingdom against kingdom, and nation against nation. After Israel is divided into northern and southern kingdoms, a prophet named Elisha is called by God into a conflicted situation. The northern kingdom of Israel is under attack by the Arameans. The Aramean king sends soldiers to arrest Elisha, and they surround the city with horses and chariots. Elisha's servant is scared. Yet Elisha prays, and the servant's eyes are opened to see horses and chariots of fire surrounding them both. The soldiers attack, and Elisha prays, and they are struck with blindness. He then leads them to the Israelite king's camp and prays their eyes be opened. The Arameans now see they're surrounded by Israelites. The Israelite king asks Elisha, shall I kill them? And Elisha replies, you didn't capture them. Set food and water before them so they may eat and drink and let them return to their king. The Israelite king prepares a great feast for them and sends them on their way. After this, the Arameans no longer came raiding into the land of Israel. Enemies were reconciled around a table, and both nations knew peace. With whom do we need to be reconciled to know peace? Shall we stand and sing together? When you do this, remember me. Here we go.
the table of Lazarus. Six days before the Last Supper that Jesus will share with his disciples, he's in another home, that of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. Lazarus' two sisters are there as well. Martha serves the meal, a sign of hospitality, but it is Mary's act that is the highlight of dinner conversation. Mary gets up from the table and kneels before Jesus' feet. She takes a pound of aromatic nard and anoints Jesus' feet with it. Mere water won't do to wash the feet of the one who brought her brother back to life. She then wipes his feet with her hair, an act of utmost devotion and hospitality. The fragrance fills the air, but some there fumed because of the extravagance of Mary's costly act. 300 denarii is the price of this ointment, close to a year's salary. Some wonder whether the money would have been better spent on the poor. Jesus tells them, leave her alone. She has done a beautiful thing to me. As for the poor, you can always do good to them wherever you want. But you do not always have me. She has anointed my body prior to its burial. Even as Jesus accepts Mary's hospitality, he reminds us that we can extend hospitality to the poor whenever we want and to invite the crippled, the lame, and the blind. And by providing food for the hungry, drink for the thirsty, and a welcome for the stranger, we unknowingly play host, not just to angels, but Jesus himself. Let us stand and sing Yezu, Yezu. A table is such a simple piece of furniture where those who are hungry gather, friends and strangers, neighbors and foreigners, family and orphans, rich and poor, slave and free, male and female, young and old, gay and straight, refugee and citizen, Democrat and Republican. None 
of those labels contain our identity. What draws us here is our common hunger for living bread and shared thirst for living water, the bread of heaven and cup of salvation are here on this table. Our deacons will have plates of gluten-free bread cubes for you to receive as you come forward during the communion time after the words of institution and Lord's Prayer. For those who cannot come forward, someone will bring bread to you after everyone has been served and we're back seated. I'll invite us all to eat the bread and drink the cup together. Because we are a priesthood of all believers, a holy nation, God's own people, tonight we'll be consecrating these elements together by uniting our voices for the words of institution, followed by a unison Lord's Prayer. I would invite those who are able at this point to stand as we prepare to share the earliest words about the Last Supper given us by Paul in his letter to the Corinthian church. Please join with me. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd invite the deacons at this point to come forward and have two places for people to receive bread. And for those who are not able to come forward, someone will come and bring bread to you. Don't fight over it, guys. <laughs> this is all gluten-free. If you'll turn and face folks on this side. Here we'll get
Let us eat the bread and drink the cup together. Once you've partaken, you may be seated. us that before Jesus and the disciples left from the upper room, they sang a hymn. After our hymn and blessing, we'll depart in silence into the night. So may we stand together and sing, Ah, Holy Jesus.
have been washed and cleansed. We have shared a meal with our Lord, who has welcomed us as a guest and served us the bread of heaven and cup of salvation. Let us follow him into the garden, there to pray with them. As he is betrayed, <laughs> abandoned, crucified. Thank you.